hanging out. We've got an absolutely loaded show for you today. Why? Because for the first time this season, we've got these locks. Week zero locks on deck. Thank you so much for hanging out. The, the chat is already bumping. If you want to jump in and you are watching us live, then smash that subscribe, smash that like, Join the conversation. Uh, I think I went back to listen to some of the early shows last year, and and we had like live arbitrage going in the chat. So like, if you're a super DJ, then you found your people uh, here watching the uh, the Cover Three Podcast Lock Show live. It is 11 a.m. on Thursday, and so maybe you want to go ahead and make sure that this is the time that you want to set aside for the rest of the season. This is when we will be joining you all through the season uh, to preview each and every weekend slate. Again, 11 a.m. on Thursdays, and we are uh, live at 11 a.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, uh, as well as getting up with you at the end of the night on Saturdays. It's been a minute since we've gotten all together, so uh, and we don't have a, a huge slate here. So, gentlemen, how are we feeling? I'm excited. We've got football coming up. I mean, I was I kind of wish there was a game today. Honestly, it's like I, I woke up with the feeling for the lock spot of excitement. I had it was the same kind of buzz as oh, we've got football to watch tonight, and then it slowly dawned on me, well, we do, but it's NFL preseason football, and I don't really care about that. But I'm I'm pretty pumped. First lock spot of the year. I've probably got a few too many plays on the card, considering what we know at this point. But let's go. Let the chopper spray, man. Come on. <laughs> There's let's, no let's such go. thing as too few play. Like we're gonna we're gonna load up today. I'm fired up, man. And is I'm discipline Danny dead? Up. What's that? <laughs> is, is discipline Danny dead or coming out week zero? No, no such thing as two plays. It might be out the window. Um, right. you know why I'm fired up? Because two days ago I couldn't find a line in the Florida State Duquesne game, and now I can. So we're ready. <laughs> but how we doing? Doing good, man. My 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 lighting went out. I looked a little washed out. Hope my picks are not washed, uh, you know, this year. But uh, I'm I'm ready to do this. this you were fun. six and zero in week zero last year, so we, yeah, we've got a we got a high bar to, to meet. Nowhere here. to go but down. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, if uh, is, unless there's any other business to take care of, you guys ready to lock it up? Let's do it. Since 2005, the under in games between service captains is 40 dash. Nine and one. We're picking locks. Give me an over in this one as well. A little two for one special. Don't get these locks. I was a sicko last week. Y'all were watching the good games. I was live betting the hell out of ULM, Kentucky. My blue plate special five star locks are coming. Five star master lock. Lock it. You up. want these locks? I'm 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 living and dying every every point every cover. New song. We got we had we had to get uh, the whole squad in there, and of course, you know, to keep we, we got to keep the OG, uh, the general manager of Vanderbilt football, still to have a little bit of a presence. Um, all right, we will begin with, of course, the honors on the tee box going to our regular season uh, winner from last year. That is Bud Elliott, which means you've got the entire week zero slate to choose from. You can go as basic as you want to go if you want to take us out to Ireland. You can go as sick as you want to go if you happen to have something on Western Kentucky, Austin P. You know, this is all, the world is your oyster. Where would you like to go? Oh, I'm going to go really sick. <laughs> or do you want me to save that until the end? Sorry. Yeah, let's, I, let's, I, let's, I, really, I totally really forgot our, our pre-show meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. That's okay. Yeah. All these games are sick, right? I, I actually discussed this pre-show. Like, I, I think watching Northwestern's offense is also uh, pretty sick. Now, I think Northwestern will be an improved team this year, but I do have a play in this game. I'm going to take Northwestern team total under 18 and a half. I think Helensky will be the quarterback. I don't think he's a good quarterback. Nebraska, I think, will be better up front this year, potentially as far as stopping the run, but they could have some deficiencies in the passing game. Uh, but I'm not really sure that Ryan Helensky is the guy to exploit that, and I think that Nebraska – will probably be able to shut down the run and, and keep Northwestern, uh, you know, un, under 20 points. I think under 18 and a half uh, is, is worth a look here. So that, that'll be my first shot for this year. Uh, well, stick with that game. Uh, it, is anybody jumping on that? Or what other no. plays do we have for Nebraska and Northwestern? Uh, uh, my play is along the same lines. Go ahead. Because I'm, I'm taking the under. I'm going to take just the, the game under 49 and a half because – I'm, I'm with you, bud. I don't really think Northwestern's going to score a lot of points. I think that 
offensively, they're still going to be Northwestern. Like this has never been an explosive team that scores a bunch of points. And when they do, it's typically not against, you know, other big 10 teams. And then on the other side of the ball, like, I know that, you know, Nebraska coming into the season, they've got the new offensive coordinator, Mark Whipple. Casey Thompson is at quarterback. And, you know, they've made changes because, you know, Scott Frost is on the hot seat. feels like he needs to do something. And ironically enough, since he's taken over the job, it's been the defensive side of the ball. that Nebraska's been better at than on the offensive side of the ball. But it's also the first game of the year. And I do think that there will probably be some kind of growing pains for the Nebraska offense. I don't think they're just going to come out. Everybody's going to be clicking on all cylinders with new faces, new people calling plays, probably be some problems there. So maybe they don't get off to a great start. And I also think that Northwestern defensively last year, like they completely fell apart and without Mike Hank, which Jim O'Neill comes in, struggles, very young defense. I think going into year two, there's much more experience. I don't know if they're going to be suddenly the same kind of Northwestern defense we've seen in previous years that helps them win the division. But I don't think they're going to be the same defense that was allowing 30 points per game last year either. So I think that this is going to be – I think Nebraska is going to win. I, I lean towards Northwestern in the points because I think it's going to be low scoring, but I think 49.5 is a little too optimistic for these two teams right now. All right. I have a play in this game as well. Give me the Cornhuskers, lay the 13. I'm just going to keep Ooh. it simple. Like these are two three and nine teams that are not equivalent, right? We can even looking at the records, the way they unfolded last year, they did play last year and Nebraska beat them 56 to seven. I don't think it'll be that lopsided, but the 22 transfers, I like Casey Thompson. I think Adrian Martinez, we talked about him a lot the last several years. He was starting, really felt like it was holding back uh, that program with the turnover bug. I think this is a big win for Scott Frost early to set a tone. Their win total seven and a half. I mean, I think most people think this team's going to be a lot better, myself included. Plus, did you guys see the Nebraska contingent that is all over the streets of Dublin? Do you know this, right? <laughs> They're yeah, all the there with the red, the white with the red ends on the cars. They're there in full force to read on to root on Nebraska. Okay. So I, I came in fourth last year in the locks is if, if you wanted to just go in and, and automatically be like, I, I don't like uh, chips percentage. I'm going to fade everything that he does, but I will point out that there is one specific situation where I was profitable and it was in a lock fight with Danny, which sets up the fight, 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 fight. Yeah, went eight and four in uh, lock when the ACC boys went head to head last year. And I am going to be taking Northwestern. Can I get a 13 and a half out you there? You can. You can. Yeah. There's 13s, there's yeah. 13s and a half. I, a, a lot of the thinking from the like football side of this is similar to what Tom already laid out when he wanted to take the under. And hey, like double digit spread, low total. Like th that's almost lines up right there where you should at least sniff around the underdog. And I think that it is likely that this Nebraska offense is going to sputter a little bit getting out the gates. I, I don't think that they're going to be able to, across this entire game, be able to just march up and down the field on this Northwestern defense. So if it's going to be low scoring and if it's going to be close, then I do think that Northwestern is going to be a good play. And, and I know that Kildare is going to be riding hard. How are you jumping on the other side of Pat Fitzgerald's Irish grandparents? How are you jumping on the other side of Pat Fitzgerald in Ireland? I I think that there's there's too many vibes there. Uh, give me Northwestern, and it's and it is a, a sprinkle, a hint of wouldn't it be hilarious considering the amount of pressure that is on Scott Frost that Nebraska could win this game. And all of those Nebraska fans could be loading up on uh, the, was it, is it our Lingus? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Loading up on the our Lingus jet on the way back. And they could already be starting to pass the hat around for the buyout if they don't like what they see. So I'm, I'm going to go with Northwestern and I will, I'll take those points. By what the if, way, you guys didn't get the end joke. Did you know that they actually put red ends on the car? If there's a novice driver and it looks like the Nebraska logo, <laughs> They're all over the streets. That's what it is. The other thing, <laughs> have we looked into Scott Frost's ancestry? Because I'm not so sure. Like, if you look at him, he's got more of a leprechaun look than uh, Patrick more Gerald does. So I'm not so certain that he doesn't have lineage there as well. I think everybody is pretty much Irish at this point. I, I think right? Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah. I think Pat Fitzgerald should lean into it 
and just like wear a full leprechaun suit on the <laughs> sideline, I think that will give the team a boost. So Fitz, if you're listening, come on, just, just think about it. Without a doubt. All right, Tom, uh, where would you like to go next? Uh, I will go to, uh, I'm going to go to one I've kind of already hinted at on the show. Just get it out of the way here. I'm taking New Mexico State plus nine and a half because I don't know how, I think we've talked about it. Nevada could be very bad this year. And we don't really know how bad it can be yet. But I also don't think that the ratings have really kind of accounted for or caught on to how bad this Nevada team can be, considering Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs have both moved on to the NFL. They were the two biggest parts of that offense last year. Jay Norvell left to take the Colorado State job. He took a whole bunch more with him on the way there, coaching staff, players, a whole lot of stuff. And the cupboard's been left pretty bare, like mostly the roster that, you know, some of the trash that blows through the stadium at, on windy nights could be on the two or three deep on the depth chart at this point. I just don't know how good the Wolfpack are going to be, especially early in the year. And this is a New Mexico State team that has routinely been one of the worst teams in the country on an annual basis. But Jerry Kill is taking over and Jerry Kill has shown a very good ability in his coaching stops elsewhere to play competent football teams that don't do dumb stuff teams that are able to stay in games because they're just doing what basic stuff that helps keep them in games and i'm thinking at home in the home opener against a completely new nevada team i think new mexico state can hang so i'm gonna get nine and a half i wish for the locks pod purposes it was still where it was where i think it was at 12 before it's come down in recent weeks for for a reason but nine and a half i think i i, I still like it so i'm gonna lock up the aggies and then just hope for the best uh, anybody else? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Absolutely. <laughs> to which point I'm starting to wonder, because it it might continue to drop. I mean, you know, the Cover Three podcast on Thursdays, that thing, that thing can move some lines. This was at 12, mm -hmm. 12 and a half at one time, and we've already got more than a, a field goal of movement. So as long as it's above a touchdown, I'm still gonna be in on it. I, I like being able to get the nine and a half, obviously. And um, yeah, for a lot of the reasons, New Mexico State has a brutal schedule. You know, they they live that independent life where they just walk around, take paychecks and take L's. Mm -hmm. There are very few games on the Aggie schedule where they are sitting down as a coaching staff. They are sitting down as a team and thinking we we can win this game. This is one of those few games they're playing at home. Uh, yeah, I'm on the Aggies plus the nine and a half as well. I'm, anybody else i mean i'm i'm uh i i i'm pretty invested in this game already uh i also hit, hit some 14 and a half which i felt really really good about i think now i kind of want to pivot and attack this in a little bit different way okay uh, so but I, I i'm certainly not laying more than a touchdown with nevada I, I think tom has the correct side here but i'm gonna think about the profiles of these coaches so he already covered jerry kill if New Mexico State wins this game, it will not be in shootout fashion. It'll be very mm -hmm. Northwestern-y, right? Now, on the other side, the only kids you can name on this Nevada team are probably the running backs. Your new head coach is a career defensive coordinator. They haven't announced the uh, the starting quarterback yet. I think it'll be Illingworth, but I guess it could also be Cox, who got the offseason DUI, and maybe they're trying to play Coy, or maybe they're really not sure who's going to play. Uh you don't want to lose the game by throwing a whole bunch of picks in the first half if you're, you know, Ken Wilson and now you're, you're taking over there. I think that both sides will come out very conservatively. I think both sides' run defenses are actually better than their pass defenses, maybe by a lot, by the way. Uh, and I think that they will probably both just run into uh, not good, but like maybe somewhat better than pass defense, run defenses early on. And so I'm going to take the under 25 in the first half on this one. I, I do not see three touchdowns in a field goal being scored I, I like that quite a bit 25 and a half 25 and a half perfect yeah similar lines i love bud goes with the half game i'm going with the, the the whole game under 50 and a half for a lot of the reasons you talked about i mean this offense new offense no more air raid a lot of the squad left there aren't the players aren't there they do have eight starters on the defensive side of the ball nevada does so i think they'll be able to slow down jerry kill team which is going to try to run the football and play good defense so i think it's going to be a lower scoring affair too i would lean with you guys too on new mexico state 
It's just getting a little bit too low for me. So I'm just going to stick with the under. All right. Um, Danny, where would you like to go? Um, let's just get it out of the way. Let's just go ahead. I mean, let's put Florida State on the board early. It's 35 and a half, right? That's yeah. the number I can get. Yep. Lay them. Don't even think about it. This is covered by halftime. This is a new look Mike Norvell team. Jordan Travis, he said he's looking comfortable. He's confident. The hiccup last year with Jacksonville State has this team motivated. I think this is going to be a track meet for the Knowles. Lay it to Duquesne. Lay the points. No doubt about it. Lock agreement. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. The Knowles boys are riding again. Let's go. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've got this 52 to 7. So uh, here's the thing. Florida State does not come back to Tallahassee for three weeks after this. They go to New Orleans to play in the Dome. Then they get a bye. Then they go to Louisville. I don't think they're going to be one and two coming off that, but they could be. And so it's going to be important for Florida State fans to leave those stands feeling good. Mike Norvell wants to get some positive vibes. I know it's just Duquesne, but they haven't started off the year 1-0 and in, I think, three or four years. So it was 2016 because okay, the, 20, five or six years. Yeah, the 2017 opener against Alabama is what broke Florida State as a national power. They went into that season picked as the ACC favorite, even though Clemson had just won the national championship. And is that Francois is the yeah, starter? Andre Francois goes he down. Gets, Knocked out by Alabama. They lose that game 24 to 3, and it ain't been the same since. Do you uh have you guys seen the the scores for Duquesne last year? I know they went no. seven and three. I didn't uh dive into the box scores of those seven wins or three losses. They did beat uh Ohio in Ohio 28-26. So that was pretty good. But they also had uh, a loss 45 to 3 to a kind of a bad TCU team, uh, Sacred Heart beat them by three scores. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure that's the same level of athleticism on the field. It's not. I mean, are, are we hitting not. all the FCS ones right now? If, if you've got other ones, I'm not. Uh, I don't think I've got any of the FCS ones on my card right now. So if you want to stick in FCS lane, like are you you're going with North Carolina, you going with Western Kentucky, what you got? I've got two more. All right. All right. Give me UNLV minus the 21. Against Idaho, Idaho State. Idaho State's pretty bad. And you're in on UNLV. I am. I am in on UNLV. So that's kind of the double whammy there. I... Do you guys like Austin P at all? Like, I, I, that's kind of a, a total sicko mode question here, but I'm. <laughs> I don't know anything about Austin P other than it's in yeah. Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> It's where Will Healy came from. There, yeah, Will Healy we came might, from Austin. We might be Peay. talking about Will Healy later. <laughs> All right, give me Western Kentucky too. I will say Western Kentucky's new quarterback, who played at West Florida, was good enough to beat out Deggy, who's now at Troy, and uh, he he had monster numbers. So I, I think they'll come out and chuck the ball quite a bit. What are you getting? <laughs> Wrong one. Go ahead. What did you get WKU at? Uh, what is it now? Hold on. It is uh, 21 and a half. Yeah. So we're fading three FC Bud Elliott, week zero, three locks fading FCS teams. It's time for sicko mode. Let's go. I'm a little bit lower on some of the teams in the bottom of the Sun Belt. If things go wrong, they could be like UMass UConn. That's kind of like sicko mode of a sicko mode. Just had, just had to alert the moment, you know, since we were just already deep into it. You know what? If it's new drop. You know, new segments. Just break into it whenever you want, bud. I'll, I'll just be on the ready, just like we are with all, all the right. other sounders. Chip's like, "Hey, save this drop and like, let's go FCS in minutes." Let's, let's all right. start with fading three FCS teams in week zero. Um, all right. Do we have any other any other uh, FCS plays? No, I don't. Right. Okay, we're well, relying on you for the UNC one. Like, do, do we know what you, you feel like they're gonna run it up at home? I don't, it's a, it's, a, this is supposed to be a celebration. All right. You know, we're bringing, we're, we're bringing the, this, the, there's a, there's a lot of fanfare around getting Florida A&M in there. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to really lean into um, the opportunity to, to celebrate all football. So I've, if anything, I would only go first half. Yeah. And the idea that they get out there, um, you know, get a couple scores and then probably pack it in. Something that I would actually say for many of these uh, games, and actually 
is a starting point for my play in Illinois, Wyoming, because I think it's important to note that the Indiana game that is coming up right on the heels of this Wyoming week zero opener is pretty important, important for Illinois' math to be able to get to six wins, to be able to get to a bowl game. And I think that Wyoming, like Nevada, is a team where the number is not, it is not possible for the number to take into consideration the massive exodus of transfers and how different that team is going to look. And with that being a potential to, to grab some value on Illinois, I would rather grab the first half minus six and a half. I just need the fighting line. I'd have a touchdown lead at halftime. And then after that, Burt might be able to just sit on the rock. Don't hate an under as well. If you want to jump on that with a similar line of thinking with the upgraded defensive coordinator that Illinois has and Wyoming's offense, I, I don't expect them ever to be high scoring, but especially not with uh, losing the quarterback and, and your best wide receiver. So I like Illinois minus six and a half for the first half. Oh, lock agreement. Yes. Oh, we got, we got too many sounders. I think the market has Illinois properly rated, but I don't think they have Wyoming properly rated. Wyoming lost a lot. They also lost quite a bit on defense. If I can actually pull up my tab here, where is this? At? There we go. It's the last one because it's WY. That's that makes sense. Uh, they got some guys missing this game, by the way, who could be important, maybe not. The transfer from Alabama, the defensive end Cox, is probably going to miss most of, if not the entire year. And Harsh, their other D end, uh, is definitely most likely going to be out. For this game, um, they're not real big up front either, especially a defensive end. And I feel like I can trust a Burt team to just kind of level that edge and get the corner. And so I, I do like uh, Illinois here, minus six and a half in the first half. Yeah, I saw the Wyoming depth chart for this game and the two deep on the defensive line. I, I just did the comparisons. The average weight of the two deep of Wyoming's defensive lineman is 263 pounds. The average weight of Illinois' offensive line is 315 pounds. That is a 50-pound difference in the average between them. Now, of course, they could be quick, and that could be a problem. But I'm taking Illinois over 27 and a half points team total because I think that with a new offensive coordinator, home opener, they want to get some excitement. They want to get some juice going. They, you know, they're trying to sell tickets for the rest of the season. I think they're going to want to put on a show, not putting out too much of a show, simply because they don't want to put too much on tape for Indiana to look at. But I also think because of that size advantage that they have up front, they're going to be able to control the ball pretty much when they have it and do a lot of things that they want to do without having to get too complicated. So. I think they're going to get at least four touchdowns in this one, Chip. I, but I think your first half play is safe. I do worry about maybe in the second half they slow down and take the foot off the gas. But I think that they might get to 28 by halftime. So Illinois over 27 and a half. That's lock it up. Tom, do you worry uh, or not worry? Do you buy in to Bielema joking about me being more up tempo? Like, do you think no. that's actually true or you think, I they, think it's like, true? Okay, I think I think he wanted it last year. I think that's part of the reason they made the change at offensive coordinator after only one season. Like he comes back, takes over, hires an offensive coordinator, and then a year later he's firing him to you know replace him with somebody else. You typically, you know, you don't do that unless you've got something in mind. And he had said before last year he wanted to go more up tempo and a little more RPO kind of stuff and modernize the offense. And they just didn't do that last year. They were very much like the old school what you would expect from a Bielema team. And I think he wants to revamp a little bit i think he's trying to be a little more explosive on offense and i think that when you look at the personnel they've had and who they've kind of brought in i think that all kind of aligns together yeah tommy devito is going to be better at running that up-tempo attack than brandon peters was mm -hmm. fundamental feels easy right but it's never that easy <laughs> <laughs> Give me Wyoming plus 11. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. We you're could all at, win. Because you guys all said I'm worried about that second half. Like I, We could all have some fun hey, here. Um, you, got, you guys laid out some outstanding cases. Craig Bowl took to social media and was begging play. Like, hey, can anybody come play for us? Because everybody's leaving. Isaiah Nayor goes to Texas. Xavier Valade, he goes to ASU. Like, he doesn't have anybody on his roster. No one's giving him a chance. We're talking about Illinois like they're defending Big Chance, Big Ten champs. And I know we have some we will bias be next here. Year. <laughs> but they were still, I'll remind you, 
last in the Big Ten in passing, 115th in the country in scoring, 112th in total offense, which is why we have new coordinator in place. And Chip's acting like Tommy DeVito is like Jalen Hurts transferring to Oklahoma. Yeah. Let's just wait and see a little <laughs> bit, okay? I'm going to yeah. go ahead and take Wyoming in the 11. It's too much. I don't trust Illinois that much You're- just yet. You're just mad at me for locking up the Florida State under on the win total locks. <laughs> this I is am. just <laughs> the specific because you're right, Danny. There is a scenario where the first half minus six and a half, the Illinois team total over, and your Wyoming plus eleven can all hit. And in that very specific set of circumstances, all four of us will get to celebrate, but we will we will see. It seems like everyone's coming at it from a slightly different mindset uh, across the board. Does uh does Danny want a better number? Because uh at the book that I can't name because it's an offshore, but they just raise their limits and they'll take seventy five hundred to pop. It, it it just went to twelve. Perfect. I'll just, jump all over that. I don't know if that's a negative Max. sign. <laughs> like as soon as they raise their limits, <laughs> not going to be enough. Yeah. Coming oh, up on the other side, we continue with our week zero locks next. Starfleet, get to Starfleet. Prepare for warp ten excitement. Yeah. This is an unauthorized launch. It is the greatest adventure of your life. Ah! These broken rocks are reading our nightmares, but I don't like my nightmares. Behold! Oh, so magical. Whatever happens, we're in this together. We are coming across, again, the multi-platform excellence of the Cover 3 podcast. We've got a lot of viewers on YouTube watching. We've also got a lot of viewers on Facebook, to which I will say, hey, jump on over to YouTube too. Just smash that subscribe, smash that like, come and join us uh, on that platform as well, uh, all across the 24-7 Sports Facebook network. Again, if you are watching us there, uh, hop on over to YouTube, smash that subscribe. Let's do a quick review for those who are watching live. Tom's got the Northwestern Nebraska under 49 and a half, the New Mexico State plus nine and a half, and Illinois team total over 27 and a half. Uh, I've got Northwestern plus 13 and a half, New Mexico State plus nine and a half, Illinois first half minus six and a half. Danny is on Nebraska minus 13, New Mexico State, Nevada under 50 and a half. Florida State minus 35 and a half, Wyoming plus 12, and Bud's got Northwestern team total under 18 and a half, the New Mexico State Nevada first half under 25 and a half, Florida State minus 35 and a half, Illinois first half minus six and a half, UNLV minus 21, and Western Kentucky minus 21 and a half. All right. Uh, anywhere, Tom, where do you want to go next? Uh, my final play before we get to the sprinkles later. This is this is principle. Okay, now it's not really principle, but I'm taking UConn plus 27 just because I think the line is a little too large. I think that Utah State is going to be one of the better teams in the Mountain West. I just don't think it should be favored by nearly four touchdowns against this UConn team who now has Jim Morris. So you know they've. I don't know. I just yeah. yeah what's, what, what is the Jim Mora hook line? Like, what is what, what is the book on Jim Mora and uh, his arrival at UConn? What do we expect? I don't expect much because it's UConn. This is just you know, and it's early in the year, so our numbers could prove to be very, very wrong pretty quickly. But I've got this as being about twenty three, and if I can get it at twenty seven. Okay, sure. Give me that at least a field goal there. I also think that, you know, Utah State has Alabama coming up next week. And there's a very realistic shot that the Aggies get control of this game early and then just kind of coast in the second half. And that kind of costs them a chance to cover the 27 point spread. So give me the Huskies. It's week zero. We've got freaking first half team totals. We've got lock agreements on Illinois first half minus six and a half. Bud's taking first half unders in New Mexico State, Nevada. I might as well just take UConn plus 27. I could see why, too, because, I mean, you're getting a 2020 national champion, according to the New York Times, and you're getting them that many points. But we're going to have a fight. No. Ooh. Yeah. Fight. Fight. Fight, fight. So I think I can get it at 26 and a half, right? Is that number I can get it? I can lay 26 and a half. I can just picture right now 
Jim Moore Jr., who took he, he wanted to get back into coaching, right? He spent time in Bristol, was there in Connecticut doing stuff with the ESPN, desperate to get back in. This might be the worst job in college football. I mean, from where the program has been, and man, has it been a dramatic drop since they played in that Fiesta Bowl. But canceling a season, I think, really imp- uh, impacted this program. It's a they don't have the support of the school, even like they're not even sure what they want to do with it. He's tried to get the transfer portal, but I can just picture Jim Moore Jr. after the game, like in exasperation, like after, like, man, this just shows you how far we have to go and try to spin it that way. Plus, I think Blake Anderson's squad, Logan Bonner's back. He's a pretty good gunslinger at quarterback. I think it's going to be a field day for them. So I'll lay the points. Are we sure Bonner's healthy? Like, I know he had the offseason procedure. I, I can't seem to find. Like I, I think he is, but I haven't seen anything else. Oh, my lights turned back on. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, <laughs> but they the also one that I know about. Williams. They've got Levi Williams. Yeah, they've got they Wyoming's Wyoming. best quarterback. Yeah. Like the, That's the true. options are theirs. Um. All right. So, question for you here. I think this game could be lower scoring, even though Utah State is up tempo. I don't know what tempo UConn will run, but I do know they will run the heck out of the quarterback. I think because your options are literally take on Roberson. Zion Turner, who I saw in high school, I, I mean, Roberson last year was 11 of 28. So that's not really the best passing performance to build on. Maybe a you know, fresh start is good, but I think they'll probably try to run the QB quite a bit. Uh, I'm not really sure what they'll do on defense because Lou Spanos, we, you know, we, we hope he's doing okay, uh, stepped away uh, from the team for personal reasons. And uh, Jim Morris said, we're not really going to have a defensive coordinator right now. We're just kind of like, like, that's... Okay. Uh, not really specific. We probably talked too much about UConn. I'm just, uh, I, I believe don't see how the they're going to score. They're going to run it up on them. Utah okay. state's not going to see it coming. I liked, uh, you mentioned it. Lane Higgins of the wall street journal pointed that out. It's like Utah yes. state going from UConn to Alabama is the most incredible one week <laughs> to the next. I mean, you are going from 129, 130 to number one. It is, it is quite the whiplash. Best of luck to uh, to Blake Anderson and uh, and the Aggies as they go as they go through that um, that extreme level up in competition. But hey, at least they've already you know they'll already have the blood pumping. They'll already have things going when they show up in Tuscaloosa for the opener for the Crimson Tide. What's what's a bigger leap, UConn to Alabama or Alabama to the Jacksonville Jaguars? <laughs> Wait, is this? Are we going back into like blog 2009 yeah. version? Yeah. Would Alabama beat the Jacksonville Jaguars? Here's some stats that show you what how they stack up against each other. They would not, right? I mean, no, we, definitely we, not. A pro team stack. would crush Alabama. Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, it's beyond height, weight, speed. But- but see, I'm not asking who would win because Utah State's probably going to crush UConn. I'm asking, or Alabama would crush UConn. What's the larger leap, UConn to Alabama or Alabama to the worst NFL team? Are we, we're playing both by college rules with college clock, I assume. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because I obviously, like, you know, NFL games are so much shorter. UConn to Alabama. This Alabama team right now? Yeah, I think so. This but, Alabama team that's checking in at what, 89% on the blue chip ratio? That was so, too young and inexperienced, and now a little bit more experienced this year. So Chip are, are says the, that Alabama could beat an NFL team. Got it. All right, cool. We got. Are that the Jaguars the worst NFL team? Like, are, are we sure this is not just Tom deflecting from the Bears? Well, I mean, they had the first pick in the draft, so uh, you typically fair. get that when you have the worst record. I'm just saying, you know. And then you fired your coach after one year because he kicked a guy in the butt. So you know, and he was never mind. I'm not going to go that far. But um, yeah, <laughs> he did something else with somebody else's butt too. <laughs> hey that the, the off week can be a killer man you know whatever bi-week activities the urban meyer uh the urban meyer nfl saga all right what else do we have on the board how many do we have left i'll take us so we've got two um conference usa conference games the kayusa is going to be out here dominating the headlines in week zero I'm going to go to Boca Raton, and I mentioned Will Healy and the Charlotte 49ers earlier. I think they're going to be able to score on FAU. 
I don't think they're going to get stops though. <laughs> I don't think that the Charlotte defense <laughs> is, uh, is, is prepared for, look, I, I'm not all in on Nikosi Perry, but I, I do think that with the wide receivers that they have there, that this Florida Atlantic offense will at least be functional. I also don't trust Florida Atlantic's defense, which is why this feels disgusting, a little bit off-brand, but Charlotte FAU over 59 and a half. We're going to be in Boca on CBS Sports Network, and we're going to be throwing tutties on the board. Uh, I think nobody gets stops in Charlotte FAU. I circled it a lot. It's like at seven, seven and a half. Thought about it, broke it down, wanted to take a, a side here. But ultimately, when I looked at the weaknesses and they lined up perfectly with the strengths for both teams, I, I just got to trust the math there and think that there's going to be a lot of scoring. Could be a windy day. Weather could be bad there. Um, I'm going to save this for the last portion of the show. Mm. <laughs> oh. I'll, nothing. Discipline. <laughs> Discipline Danny's back. <laughs> I'm trying. Sitting on my hands. Just shut up. Just next one. Okay. So we already have plays on most of the slate. Does anybody get to get it? Oh, North Texas UTEP is the other one. Anyone making a play there? No idea what's going to happen there. Has this oh, no, thing I, dropped? I... What's the movement on this one, Ben? Because uh, – it is it has been moving, but I wasn't able to tell which direction it was moving. It think, uh it definitely has dropped. It it, it opened uh North Texas minus four and it it's uh yeah it has dropped. UTEP was favored for a little while too. It's like it's swung both ways. Yeah. Um I don't see it. I I I think North Texas wins this football game. Just as a, a is that a lock or you just a, some analysis for us? No, no, yeah, I'm, I'm a lock them up at pick. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so money, I, I, money line for, or yeah, pick them for North Texas and Bud at UTEP um, on Saturday night, 9 p.m. kickoff. Dana Dell has been playing up. some weird games like locking oh, out the media. You know? <laughs> and uh, I know there was a report, Mike, Mike Craven had it yesterday. Uh, UTEP's leading tackler is still not practicing because they're waiting to see, on a waiver to see if he can get a seventh year. Uh, I don't know this for certain. So this is speculation on my part, but even if they do get the waiver for this kid, wouldn't he have to go through the acclimation period? You know, like the two days you wear the helmet and then you wear the shells for one day. And at that point, I mean, I just don't think the math adds up if he hasn't been practicing, which I guess is that's why Demo closed practice. Uh, I think this is a better North Texas team than some people realize. They have had some real bad injury luck the last two years, especially during the COVID year when they were playing walk-on corners pretty consistently, which was not, not a great recipe for success. Uh, and I, the the numbers for the quarterback at UTEP are good, but I'm a little bit skeptical that it wasn't the receivers who they lost creating some of those. And so I'm going to take North Texas here on the road to pull the victory. I like it too. Uh, they won five straight to get bowl eligible. I think they bought in. I'm a believer in Seth Luttrell. He's a pretty damn good coach. So I'm going to take uh, the green wave. And he could beat us all up too. So. Yes, he could. Yeah, it was it was an interesting. Maybe all at once. Yeah, we, possibly. <laughs> they had flip seasons last year. UTEP yeah. started great and then just kind of had to like hold on. Took a couple of L's down the stretch, including one to North Texas, low scoring twenty seventeen game. North Texas started poorly, like you mentioned. They get hot all of a sudden. This former, you know, the the program of Mason Fine and the one that sent like Graham Harrell off to USC. They decided they were just going to get down to running the ball and playing good defense, and that's what led to more success. So it, they, they had flip seasons last year. North Texas definitely finished stronger. I, I don't hate that as well. All right, There's only one game on the slate that we haven't talked about. It's time to talk about it. You, do you want to start us, Danny? Sure. All right. It's one of our favorite lock plays on our win totals. Mm -hmm. We're going to be cashing this baby by the end of September in mm -hmm. large part because we all – we didn't even use pencil. We put Sharpie in there for the Vanderbilt Commodores. The number, somebody in our chat actually said the number went up. Is that right? Yeah, it went it's from been six moving. and a half to eight. Is it it's higher coming than back eight? down now, though? It's at eight and a half some places. It was eight and a half, and now it's just now uh, at, at, at Penny, it just got hit back down to seven and a half. I, I, I think I think Chris is going back, back to eight or seven and a half. This has been ping pong. Uh, but once it's over it seven has. between 10, it's not important. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and lay them with the doors. It, 
Hawaii is a disaster. I said Yukon is the toughest job in America. I mean, it might be a battle with Hawaii with the mess. I mean, there was a mutiny. Players were quitting. 21 players left. Five of the six receivers, the top four rushers. Timmy Chang, I think this was one of those hires that, hey, can we, like, who wants to, and it was, oh, perfect. This guy played here. He put up big numbers. We'll bring him back which I hope he does well in the long run, but I think this is a massive, massive turnover uh, job where he's just going to have to you know, weed out some of the players. But uh, give me our guys, man. Give me the, Bar the fighting Barton Simmons. Come on. Okay, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm, okay, yeah, are you, are you serious? We've increased our team speed. We're a little bit longer. You know, We know that Mike Wright's going to be out there as our starting quarterback, but I, I think the quarterback play in general could be could be all right. There's nowhere to go but up, and I think that we will see a higher caliber of performance against all opponents, and certainly uh, against the Warriors in this spot. It is not as much of a fade Hawaii as it is uh, a belief that this trip to Honolulu will be uh, a fortifying moment for an important season and going three and one at worst in the non-conference play in the month of September. And I will note that it was one of the two wins that Vanderbilt did have last year was going across the country, granted not all the way to Hawaii, but to play a Mountain West opponent when they went and got that victory against Colorado State. The, the returning players at least have, the, ha, have that good mental muscle memory of, uh, of what it's going to take to go and not let this thing slip away. So, yeah, give me Vanderbilt. What's the best number that we're going to be able to get here? Seven and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half. Sure, seven and a half. Let's do it. fight no. no i'm not no uh i want to i want to take this in a different direction for this game okay um, the so, wind's blowing on the big island in a different direction but <laughs> here we go but see, it's right, a new Hawaii. stadium chip i don't know how the wind impacts it yet All yeah right. it's only nine thousand seats mm -hmm. so that's a little weird uh i think you can do that if you're renovating your stadium otherwise you have to have a minimum capacity typically for NCAA rules all right so Hawaii hired the head coach of Eastern Washington to be their OC. Uh, they're going to throw the ball a lot and at a very fast pace. So I think that uh, Hawaii's offense could be like not bottom 10 nationally. I, I've actually seen a couple of the quarterbacks they brought in in person, and they have a little bit of juice. Like as recruits, I saw them, like, okay, that kid doesn't suck. Like he could be something. I like the odds that they are able to score at least some points on Vanderbilt, whose pass rush I think is particularly possibly a weakness of this Commodore team. I do think Mike Wright and Vandy will score. So go ahead and give me the over 26 and a half first half points. I think both both sides come out scoring here. And uh, you know, maybe that's 21 to 7 Vandy or, you know, who knows, 14, 13, something like that. I'd give me the 26 and a half over first half. I like that. There's uh, th then, you know, defensive adjustments click in. We're able to settle down get get the blood going and, and then lock them down in the second half you know there's up -tempo. this is crashing under by the way like like i'm as i watch this this has dropped like a point and a half during the show they the full, 50, full game 53 total? and a half to 52 yeah yeah they know what clark lee's defense is going to do to that passing attack just, that's right four that's two right. five just go like go ahead beat us whatever we've got some sweet ass defensive backs we're longer we're faster we're going to suffocate you you're not gonna be able to put the ball over us i am not locking up vandy minus seven and a half i do think they're going to win i have full faith in that it's just i don't the cover if it was under seven on the road long trip to hawaii i'd be locking it up but it's still it's a long trip touchdown that's a lot to ask and also vandy has much more important games coming up than this one they i could see the second half possibly being a situation where we're still trying to figure out who we have and what we can rely on mm. sunday morning chip is going to be a little upset that saturday night chip is fully engaged and wired getting getting vanderbilt home also but it's not the super late right it's not a midnight or a le it's a 10 no, 30 it's kid, 10 right? but it's 4 30 island right yeah but, six hours behind but for the true degenerates the late night saturday guys this is one of your few chances to watch hawaii if you live on the mainland at oh, home yeah, this year note. because it's not going to be as i mean you could probably find illegal streams like you know if you're true true degenerate but as far as on tv most of their home games will not be shown on the mainland this year Good note for the viewers. All Great right. For recruiting. All of oh, poor Timmy. 
Uh, all right, for all, all of the um, regular plays, we're ready to just take this thing on to the big old cash register mm-hmm. for our money line sprinkles. All right, money line sprinkles. Um, let's see, Danny, why don't you get us started? Uh, give me New Mexico State. We talked a lot about it uh, before. A lot of the same reasons. I think Jerry Kill went healthy. Is a great coach. I think he's going to have this program ready. And I am very concerned about Nevada with all the losses there. So give me them. What is it? Plus two eighty. Perfect. It's Home come down. It was at three hundred earlier in the week. It sucks. I'm with you though. I'm on New Mexico State plus two eighty as well for same reasons. I'm locking it up. I do think that there is a non-zero chance that the Aggies can just pull off the upset at least as often as this price suggests. And I have one more because, like, I understand why the lines are the way that they are, and I understand why some of you are betting it the way that you are. But I also understand that Nebraska might have been the best three-win team in the country last year, but it was still a three-win team. And it is still a program that throughout the tenure of Scott Frost has done dumb things to hurt itself. Whereas Northwestern's brand under Pat Fitzgerald has always been, we won't do dumb things to hurt ourselves. We'll take advantage of dumb things the other team does. So I'm taking Northwestern plus 415 on the money line just because I think that's a lot of trust in Nebraska, man. Like these are two teams that both went one and eight in conference play last year and lost their last six games of the season. Little too heavy on the Huskers. I am also on Northwestern uh, as my money line sprinkle for week zero. It is my lone money line sprinkle for week zero. There is uh, there is some that I almost feel mean, but it would be hilarious. And look, would be. Like we have two teams and two coaches as, as we have a very small sample size for week zero, but we need to start building out the idea that Illinois under Brett Bielema is a plus value week zero team who does a better job of adjusting to that early start time than the Illinois team that beat Nebraska last year in week zero. And if Nebraska continues these week zero trends, then I don't think they should ever play week zero again. Give me Northwestern. Can't trust Scott Frost. We're going with it. I mean, what was it last year? It's like we thought they'd come out in an odd man front, or an e- it's like oh, it's like he he didn't even his his excuse for why he wasn't ready for Illinois, even mm-hmm. though the defensive coordinator entirely like set up and told you how they were going to line up mm-hmm. defensively. Yeah, yeah. Man, I I like both those, but I, I by the way, you can get four twenty. If you want. To. Oh, well, there we go. Blaze it. <laughs> nice. All right. I'm going to go down to Boca. And uh, I'm not really trusting a team that switches coordinators on both sides of the ball like every single year. And taking some transfers from FSU might get you some nice offseason pop. But if those guys can't play, it doesn't actually help you come Saturday. And I think Charlotte's defense will be better than people think because I don't think they're going to play walk-ons along the defensive line like they were having to do towards the end of last year when they just got wrecked. I do trust that offense to score. Give me uh, Charlotte plus 255 to go down there and get the dub. Would be massive uh, for the 49ers if they are able to do that. It's, when I was looking, I told you I was breaking it down both ways. Charlotte plus seven and a half or even like a Charlotte money line sprinkle. Definitely trusted those more than FAU covering uh, because it's just not one that uh, not a team that should be trusted. All right. Let us review. Tom has Northwestern Nebraska under 49 and a half. New Mexico State plus nine and a half. Illinois team total over 27 and a half. UConn plus 27. Chip Scott, Northwestern plus 13 and a half, New Mexico State plus nine and a half, Charlotte FAU over 59 and a half, Illinois first half minus six and a half, Vandy minus seven and a half. Discipline Danny, seven plays on the board. Nebraska minus 13, New Mexico State, Nevada under 50 and a half, Florida State minus 35 and a half, Utah State minus 26 and a half, Vandy minus seven and a half, North Texas pick them, Wyoming plus 12. Bud with Northwestern team total under 18 and a half New Mexico state, Nevada first half under 25 and a half FSU minus 35 and a half Illinois first half minus six and a half UNLV minus 21 North Texas pick them Western Kentucky minus 21 and a half and the first half over 26 and a half in Vanderbilt, Hawaii. Our lock agreements are on New Mexico state plus nine and a half Illinois first half minus six and a half 
Vandy minus seven and a half, North Texas Pickham and Florida State minus 13 and 35 and a half. Our lock fights Chip Danny on Northwestern Nebraska, Tom Danny on Yukon Utah State, and our money line sprinkles. Uh, we've got Tom on New Mexico State and Northwestern, Chip's on Northwestern, Danny's on New Mexico State, and Bud is on Charlotte. Woo hoo hoo! Oh. We did 50 minutes on the short week zero. So imagine <laughs> what we're going to do next week. I, this this is this is why we enjoy our our format. This is why we enjoy our our listeners and our viewers because some sometimes you know sometimes you gotta you gotta stretch this thing out. Sometimes you will spend 50 minutes when there's only 11 games on the schedule. So when there's 52 of them next week. <laughs> We'll, we'll see uh, we'll see how many plays we end up having out there. But one of the reasons we've got these cards loaded up is because we are so excited to get the college football season going. And we are so excited that you have decided to be a part of it. Again, make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. You smash that bell for notifications. You get an alert anytime that we go live. And that is going to be huge for Saturdays. If you follow us on social media, at Cover 3 Podcast on Twitter, we will be in touch with you, the listeners and the fans, on when we are going to be going live every Saturday for our instant reaction shows. And that starts with this Saturday for our instant reaction show. Uh, we'll be giving you like 30 minute heads up. So we'll be giving you our warnings. As always, it kind of depends on the action and what's going on out there. Any uh, any other business before we get out of here? All good? Go Knowles. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Go Illini. You you can follow him on Twitter at Tom Fernell. You can follow him at Bud Elliott three. You can follow him at Danny Canell. You can follow me at chip underscore Patterson. Gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you.